What's up, YouTube? Welcome to another episode of Cave Videos, True Stories. Today, before I get into this story, I want to send a shout out to several family members. Dr. Amina Thomas, congratulations on your doctorate. Kimani Mack, shout out to you for achieving another goal in your college career and getting your latest degree. My nephew EJ, shout out to you for graduating from high school and hopefully you have a great college career and college education moving forward. I never stopped. I never stopped banging. I, I started banging hard, then I got so hard till it was a shame. Welcome to another episode of KM Video. True, 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 true stories. Today's story takes place 2004, possibly 2005, right before we sold the house on Eileen. So I'm at home and I'm flying my pigeons. I didn't invested all of my time and my money into my pigeon. So I got this nice new big pigeon cage that Burnett Brule had built for me. I paid Burnett to build me a pigeon cage. I bought some birds from Burnett Brule, Curtis Melicon, several other guys, Danny Horner, and I got my own strain going at this time. I got some nice deep rolling pigeons, roller pigeons. And man, I mean, that was my love at the time and my dedication. So my neighbors used to give me a hard time. They having these neighborhood watch meetings and with the sheriff, the faculty of 54th Street School having meetings on me and activities going on in my house. And it's getting real hectic, but I'm loving life at the time with my pictures, man. They give you a peace of mind that you ordinarily won't get. So they drop off flyers in my mailbox talking about attend this neighborhood watch meeting and there's activity on the block. So I know they're talking about me. I'm wondering if they knew that they put this flyer in my mailbox by accident or on purpose. So one day I'm flying my birds and I had trained my birds to fly for about an hour, go up to a dot, go as high as it could. So I would throw them up, let them fly, watch them for a little while. I would go in the house, go do something else, and then come back out. So I noticed one of my best birds wasn't in, didn't come back. He didn't go in the cage. A few days later, another one of my good birds is missing. So I'm like, damn, what's going on? I know no hawk came. None of my birds look scared or in disarray. But I'm losing some of my good birds. And I know hawks like to grab your best birds out your flock. So I'm a little bit worried. What's going on? I'm baffled. Then one day, my silly ass leaves my cage open. And I go to the hood to shoot dice. So naturally, the gate eventually comes open. The birds get out. So my birds are, my birds are nice and full because certain birds I feed and just feed so they can mate and all that. Your flyer birds you keep locked up. So these are the birds that's mating, plenty of food, and shouldn't be getting out the cage. Nevertheless, they got out the cage. So I come home and they sitting on the telephone pole next door. And I can't get them in. The way we train our birds, you know, you can whistle or you can shake a can, whatever your call is, and they'll come on in. I cannot get these birds to come in. They're just kicking it on the pole. Now they're laying out on the pole and stuff. And so I'm getting upset. And pop, pop, pop. I hear like a high powered pellet gun. Sound like an air gun. I'm like, damn, man. So I know it's coming from the south of me. A house, two houses, 
maybe even a couple more houses down the street towards Slauson Avenue. I can't figure out where this is coming from. So I get up on my roof and I see one of my birds, one of my favorite birds that was missing. I see him dead on my neighbor's garage roof or a room, an add-on room's roof. So I'm like, fuck. So I go get on the garage roof and get a better look in the backyard. I see another one of my good pigeons. He's dead too. So I'm like, shit. I'm hoping these fools ain't got no disease. But now, what is this air thing going on? So I'm on the hunt. I'm walking around. I don't hear this air. Go I don't hear this air. I don't hear the shooting. Either my pigeons have died from disease or somebody has shot my pigeons. So I can't find out who did it. So what I did, I'm mad. I'm hot. I'm mad. I'm irate. So I write, I write down, well, on my computer. I type up a letter. I print it out. And I take the letter and I put it in the mailbox of every house that I expect there may have been some wrongdoing, inflicting harm on my pigeons, my pets. And I go around the corner and I hit some of those houses with the letter. I know I done found the right house. I just don't know which house. And I'm telling them, you know, you're killing people's pets. What if I kill your dog? And I'm like, it was really stupid of me to put these letters in there. The awareness part, cool, but now I start threatening violence in the letters, which I know could have been held against me. But I'm trying to let them know, what if I do something to your pet or to you? How would you feel? So I, I make it clear, I'm just asking you guys to stop and respect my pigeons. And I apologize for them getting out and sitting on the poles. You know, my bad, they're only supposed to be on my property. I got y'all. I go in the backyard one day. I let my pigeons up. And they up in the air. And I hear pop, 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 pop. And I'm like, oh shit, somebody shooting at my pigeons. So I walk over to the bushes. We had some bushes behind my garage alongside the house. And I went to look through the bushes. And somebody's getting off on the bushes. Pop, 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 pop. Holy shit. I'm scared as a motherfucker. Nigga could have shot my eye out. So now I take it really personal. It's bad enough you killing my pigeons. And now you busting on me? No, 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 no. That wasn't cool. I go up on the roof with a 38. I know I shouldn't do this because school is in. Faculty's over there and everything. But I really don't give a fuck. I bust one time. Boom! The pellet gun stops. I don't hear it anymore. So I come down off the roof and they back at it. They shooting again. Bop, bop, bop. I go back on the roof to see if I can see them again. And now the pellets are flying by my head. I can hear the pellets flying by. I'm like, these motherfuckers intentionally shooting at me. That was the last straw. After that, I couldn't take any more. And I'm looking, I can't find them. All right, all right, we're finna have some guerrilla warfare going on. It's about one o'clock in the daytime during a weekday. I go jump my back gate. I grab my burner and I jump my back gate, which is Big Rick's sister's house. So I done jumped the gate. Go in her yard, I'm looking over fences, trying to figure out who's shooting at my pigeons. So I grab this, this branch and some leaves from Big Rick's sister's backyard and I put it over me. I'm hiding. I'm trying to creep and look over fences to get real close to who this may be. It sounds like it's coming from the house two doors from me. It's not my neighbor, house two doors from me. But then it sounds like it's coming from a few houses down the street from Rick's sister's house. All right, I'm going to catch these motherfuckers. Because I know everybody on my block. But I don't know you niggas on the other block. Y'all new residents. I'm going to catch you motherfuckers. So I'm hearing and I'm hearing and my ears are playing tricks on me. These big ass ears don't always hear correctly. 
I know it's the Burke's house. Nah, I know it's from around the corner where my homeboy Wilbur used to live. I throw all this shit off. And I walk around the corner to Keniston Avenue. I come up the block. I'm listening, I'm listening. And I don't hear nothing, but I hear some dudes working. It's some, it's some Mexicans. So I go up in the backyard. I'm like, hey, what's up? They're like, what's up? Y'all hear anybody shooting a pellet gun? No. BB gun? No. You hear any noise like air? No. I'm like, man, y'all working on this backyard. I know y'all probably know what's going on. Nah, what's going on? Somebody shoot my pigeons. Man, I'm not finna have this shit. I catch one of you motherfuckers shoot my pigeons, I'm busting on you motherfuckers. And boom, I storm off. They all quiet. I'm, I'm gone. Go back to the house. Yeah, I'm going to catch the ass. Now, and school is in. There's kids across the street and everything. And when I get all the way up on the roof, I know the people at this school can see me. But we have a slope and a flat roof in the back. And so I'm sitting up in there camped out. But sometimes I got to climb up to get a better view of what's going on. My neighbor even got a big orange tree. So I snapped a couple branches off his orange tree so I could see clearly. I'm hot, man. I'm going to kill somebody. So at this point, I told myself, I'm ready to risk it all, man. Because I feel disrespected and I'm losing money and the time that I put in for training and the money for these birds and breeding these birds, I'm ready to risk it all. I'll go back to prison for all my life. I don't give a fuck right now. That's how mad I was and I seriously meant that. I don't know if I told this story before on YouTube. But my homie Big Cal, Big Cal loved pigeons. He loved them. He used to raise pigeons too. We used to gamble in the backyard with his pigeons and back gamble in my backyard with the pigeons. I remember Cal had went to jail or something and he came home. He just wanted to chill. Cal used to like to read the paper early in the morning. And so Cal would come over with the sports page. And he wanted to play with my birds. And Cal would say, man, these birds don't do nothing. Kev, your birds is weak. I said, Cal, I haven't been flying my birds. Nick, I got some cool birds. He's like, cuz, I'm going to just keep it real. Your birds is trash. Cal, stop it. I said, you want to train them? You want to feed them? Go ahead, man. I don't have time for them. Go ahead. So Cal start coming over every day for about a week. And one day I come outside and Cal say, damn, Mac, your birds is the shit. I said, I told you that. He said, man, them red and whites you got? Them blue checks you got, man, they heat. I said, I told you, Cal. I said, you check out the cream? He said, man, I seen that motherfucking cream rolling. I ain't never seen a cream roll like that. I said, I told you, Cal, man. My birds are the shit. Because I really took the time out to train these birds, breed these birds, and really love on my birds. Now, you going to tell me? I'm going to accept a motherfucker busting on my pigeons, taking my livelihood away from me, all the time and work that I done put in for these birds? Nah, not going to happen, man. Not right then. Not right there, was it? And I was dead serious. So I grab a chopper and I'm hopping over gates. Hopping over gates. I'm going to find this motherfucker. There's no more shooting. No more dead birds, no more shooting. So whoever it was got away, man. I'm telling you, I was ready to risk it all. So whoever was killing my pigeons, that was their lucky day. They were blessed enough to get away and I couldn't find them. Lucky for you. Because I was ready to go. Today's lesson is, man, don't go around bothering other people's pets. People love their pets. People love their hobbies. And you can mess around and catch one. So don't let your loved ones do it either. If you see something like this going on, make sure you stop them. Because there's never no telling how far a person will go that own these pets. I'm out of here, y'all. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click the like button. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And don't be afraid to leave a comment. I tell all sorts of stories here. A lot of you guys have been asking for pigeon stories. What I have coming up in the near future, I'm going to tell you about Hood Day. I'm just waiting on the video to come back, and I'll probably have another pigeon story 
when I get these tapes back. Y'all stay tuned. Salute you guys for watching. I'm out of here. Peace.